Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com, and this is a comparison between the Sony A7 IV and the Sony A7C II. Now in this video, I'm gonna help you decide which one might be the right one for you, depending on what you're looking to do with your photography or videography. Now keep in mind, at the time of recording this, this A7 IV has been out for almost two and a half years at this point, and the A7C II has been out for just a matter of months. They're always replacing cameras every couple of years, so take that into consideration when you're making your decision. Now on top of that, I've used both of these cameras in the real world and we've linked that down below so you can see my use in the real world with both of these cameras. So how this video is going to work, I'm going to go down a list of the features and functions, tell you what is exactly the same between both of these cameras and where the differences lie so that you can better make a decision deciding on which way you want to go. So let's start with the image sensor. So the image sensor inside of the a7 IV as well as the a7C II is exactly the same. You have a 33 megapixel full frame BSI CMOS sensor, which is powered by a Bions XR processor, which is the same one that you find in Sony's flagship at the time of recording this, Sony A1. The sensor in both of these cameras is fantastic. 33 megapixels is plenty, whether you're gonna shoot weddings, sports, landscape, nature, wildlife, it doesn't matter. 33 megapixels is a beautiful sweet spot. It is a really nice sensor that's gonna help you get nice results for your stills as well as videos. Now, one thing I like to do in these videos is give check marks to the camera that I feel does something a little better. Now, in this case, being that they both have the same exact sensor, I'm giving nobody a check mark because nobody gets the advantage there, at least in this situation. Now, moving on, let's talk about the native ISO. It's also exactly the same between both of these cameras. It goes from 100 on the low end up to 51,200 natively and expandable up to 204,800. Now, generally speaking, you're not gonna go much past 51,200. And honestly, I don't go much past 12,800 800 at this point unless I need to be in one of those super low light situations and I don't have a fast glass or a fast piece of glass to compensate for that. But you have a pretty nice ISO range between both of these, so I'm going to go ahead and give one check mark to Sony for having nice ISO. Now continuing on to frame rate, which is also exactly the same between both of these cameras, we'll get to some of the differences and, and help you figure out which one is right for you soon. You get 10 frames a second both in electronic and mechanical shutter with both of these cameras, six frames per second when shooting in uncompressed or lossless compressed RAW. Now, as you can tell, I'm the I shoot RAW guy. If you wanna show the world that you shoot RAW, go to store.fronosphoto.com and pick up your I shoot RAW shirt and just wait to see what comments you get when you're walking down the street. But with that being said, I like to shoot the best quality RAW file as possible. I used to shoot a lot of uncompressed stuff. Now, if you're gonna shoot uncompressed with this camera, six frames a second. If you're gonna shoot lossless compressed, it's also six frames a second. Or if you dumb it down and you shoot the compressed RAW format, which I don't recommend doing, you're actually gonna get 10 frames per second. That's a lot more. Now, that's one of the downsides to these cameras when you compare it to some of the Canons out there, which we're not gonna do right now, but I figured I would mention it, that some of them, like the R8 gives you something like 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter because Canon has slightly faster electronic shutter readout speeds. Now, with that being said, if you're gonna shoot with the electronic shutter, look at this example of when I was shooting hockey. The boards and the stanchions in the background are not supposed to be bending over one way or the other. They're supposed to be straight up and down. That is an issue if you're gonna shoot fast moving subjects or not even that fast moving subjects with electronic shutter. What I was doing is I was panning and following the subject and there is no reason that the background should warble as much as it does. You just do not have a super fast readout speed when it comes to using the electronic shutter. Now there's no pro or con to either of these because they both do exactly the same thing. You will find yourself shooting mostly in mechanical shutter. The only time you're gonna wanna not shoot in mechanical shutter is if you need to be dead 
silent. And if you're gonna shoot silent, just be aware, you might get some banding or bowing if you're shooting fast moving subjects or depending on the lighting situation that you're in. Now moving on to the mounts of these cameras, it is a Sony E-mount. That means you can use all Sony glass that says Sony E-mount. You can also get lenses from Tamron and Sigma. So there are a ton of great options, even from third parties that allow you to spend less money, but still get quality pieces of glass. Speaking of quality pieces of glass, check out allenscamera.com if you're looking to purchase any of these cameras or any lenses or accessories. Now it's time to get into something a little bit different. And it's something that kind of upsets me a little bit. Let's get into focus points. You've got 759 phase detect AF points with 94% coverage. You've got real time tracking, which includes human, animal, birds, insects, cars, as well as trains with the A7 IV. Now in terms of the A7C2, you have basically the same exact autofocus, except for the addition of a dedicated AI processor. That AI processor wasn't out at the time that the A7 IV came out. When the A7R5 came out from Sony, it added that dedicated AI processor, and man, did that autofocus get better. The autofocus is better with the A7C2. Even though you have basically the same exact setup with both of these cameras, and this one just so happens to be smaller, the autofocus is going to be better with this one because of that AI processor. Now that doesn't make the A7 IV a bad autofocusing camera. I find that it lags behind ever so slightly, at least compared to the A7C2, but it all depends on what you're photographing. I was able to photograph sports without a problem, and you will be able to do everything without a problem, but if autofocus is the main determining factor for you, well then the check mark is absolutely going to the A7C2. Now, like I said earlier, this is a couple of months old. This is two and a half years old. You can just guess that in the future, when an A7 V comes out, that you're gonna end up having the new dedicated AI processor. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Sony A7C2 and edited with Fropac 4, starting with Thick, followed by Saltwater Taffy, Kaleidoscope, Copper Tone, C41, as well as Brooklyn. But all new to Fropac 4, we've got adaptive presets for the first time. X1, X2, X3, and X4. I'm using X3 to enhance the eyes with one click. I come over here, click on the mask. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. Click on iris, and boom. I can tweak the eyes to taste. You don't wanna go over the top. You just want to be subtle to make it look natural. But also, my all-time favorite preset from Fropac 1, Skittles with one click looks Amazing. So look, if you want to speed up your raw workflow, give yourself a great starting point, or edit on your phone in mobile, these presets work in mobile. We created 14 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get the Grand Slam bundle that includes Fropack 1, 2, 3, and 4, and of course comes with Skittles, you can do that as well. Now, let's get back to the video. Now let's move on to burst rates, AKA how many shots in a row you can get. The A7 IV will give you 828 raw files when using the CF Express Type A cards. The A7C2 will give you 44 raw files because it only has one UHS-2 SD card slot. It's not redundant. You have two card slots inside of the A7 IV. One of them is just dedicated to being an SD card slot, and the other one can be an SD card slot or a CF Express A card slot. Now, if you're looking up pricing for CF Express A cards, you're gonna notice that they are pretty expensive when you look to purchase those depending on what size you go with. Honestly, they're really expensive at the time of recording this. Most likely, you're gonna get away with using just really good SD cards. Look at somebody like ProGrade or SanDisk. Those are the type of cards that I like to use. You also have cards from Sony. They make tough cards. They're gonna work very well inside of this camera. Now, one of the reasons I like having two card slots is I like to shoot redundant. What that means is whatever is being saved to card one is also being saved to card two. So that means all of your raw files will go from, will be on one and be on two when you shoot it redundant. And the same thing applies when you're shooting video. Now you don't have redundancy in the A7C2 because you only have one card slot. If that is a deal breaker for you that you demand or need to have two cards because you shoot weddings or you don't want to, I mean, you never want to lose your files and knock on wood. 
I'm knocking on wood, I'm knocking on my forehead. That hopefully doesn't happen too often, but just make sure you use good memory cards because the last thing you wanna have happen is a bad memory card failing and you lose everything. And that's also why we shoot redundant. So we're going with two check marks for two card slots in the A7 IV. Now moving on to the max shutter speeds, cause we do have something different with both of these cameras here. The A7 IV will max out at 1 8,000th of a second in both mechanical and electronic. Now the A7 C2 will be 1 4,000th of a second with mechanical and 1 8,000th of a second when you go into electronic. It's a shame that both of these cameras don't go to 1 16,000th of a second with with electronic shutter like some of the competitors do, but I do suspect in the future an A7 V might go a little bit higher. Now what this means is if you're using faster glass in brighter situations, you might have to stop down from 1.2 to 1.4 or 2.8 in order to compensate for all of that bright ass light coming in. So in this case, I'm not giving a I'm not giving a check mark to either of them. Fine. You know what? Steven just said, hey, what about the four? Well, technically it's better because it's one eight thousandth both ways. So we're gonna give it one eight thousandth of a check mark. Now let's move on to video because a lot of people like to shoot stills as well as video. And you're gonna realize that this is basically the same thing just with some new additions in the A7C2. You will get in both of these full frame 4K UHD video up to 30 frames per second at 10 bit 422, which is oversampled from 7K. You can get cropped super 35 4K up to 60 frames per second, full frame 1080p up to 120 frames per second, unlimited record time, which is huge these days, no no overheating, S-Log3 and S-Cinetone. You have focused breathing compensation and a digital hot shoe for wireless audio. That is the same for both of these. Now the difference is that the A7C2 has the addition of Sony's AI-based auto framing video mode and USB-C streaming in 4K up to 30 frames per second. That's just because it's newer and it's something they've added to the latest generations of their cameras. The auto framing feature is pretty cool if you're gonna photograph or video yourself. It's going to move it around and zoom in on you just a little bit and just follow you around. It's a really cool feature, but to me, it's not one of the main selling points that you would buy one over the other. The big selling points are the fact that you get unlimited record time. No longer are you limited to $29.59 and you could just keep going and you shouldn't run into overheating issues. Moving on to image stabilization because you have IBIS built into both of these cameras. The A7 IV gives you up to five and a half stops of stabilization with IBIS. You also have an active mode stabilization which is gonna crop in slightly on your image to give you a little bit extra stability. Now the A7C2 has up to seven stops of stabilization with IBIS and it also has active mode stabilization. Seven is better than five and a half, which means one and a half stars. I mean, check marks, if my math is correct. Five, six and a half, seven. Yes, one and a half check marks. One of the biggest differences you're going to find between both of these cameras is when you're looking through the viewfinder. The a7 IV has a 3.68 million dot EVF with 120 frames per second refresh rate and the a7C2 has a 2.36 million dot EVF with 120 frames per second refresh rate. Now you're not going to notice much of a difference in say image quality with the three point something the two point something it's the size. It's the size that matters. In this case size absolutely does matter. Don't tell my lady friend that. But yes, size matters here because the viewfinder is one, it's in the middle of the camera where I think viewfinders should be on a camera like this. And two, the A7C 2s has it off to the left hand side, which gets in the way for someone like me who's a left eye shooter because my nose gets more in the way. It's a smaller viewfinder. It's harder to get your eye up in there, especially if you're someone who wears glasses. I don't shoot with glasses. I wear glasses, but I shove my eye super deep in there and it's much harder to see the viewfinder with your eye when you're using the A7C2. It's not a deal breaker. You get used to it, but I just need you to be aware that the viewfinder is larger on the a 7 Four than it is on the A7C2, so we are giving a check mark to the A7 IV. In terms of the screens on the back of these cameras, exactly the same, a three inch 1.03 million dot very angle touch screen where you can touch everything, meaning you can control the menus from there, you can flip it out, you can rotate it. Just understand that the EVF is gonna be higher quality when you're reviewing your images or video than the 1.03 million dots on the back of this camera. I'm not a big fan of the screen. This is something they need to update at some point. 
point, so no check marks there. Now, for those of you who are going to be shooting flash, the flash sync speeds are different between these cameras. The a7 IV gives you 1 to 50th of a second flash sync, whereas the a7C II gives you 1 1 60th. Now, it's not a big difference, but it's a slight difference, so we have a slight check mark here on the a7 IV. Let me quickly jump in here and say, would you like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations? If you said yeah, just head on over to fronosphoto.com, look for this orange box, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Let's talk about the batteries in these cameras. You have really good batteries from Sony. It is the same battery, the NPFZ100. You do have USB charging available with both of these. Now the A7 IV has the ability to allow you to add a vertical grip, which means you can slide an extra battery in there. You can shoot vertical and change all of your settings and hold on to the camera much easier if you have larger hands. Now the A7C2, which is smaller, does offer a grip option for $150, but it's a dumb grip because it does doesn't do anything other than extend the grip. I liked having it on the camera, but it doesn't give you any benefit beyond just making the camera feel a little better in your hands. For that reason, we're going with another check mark for the a7 IV. Now let's move on to the weight. As you could imagine here, the a7 IV is larger than the a7C2 and weighs in at 1.45 pounds or 658 grams. The a7C2 is 22% lighter at 1.13 pounds or 514 grams. Why is it smaller and lighter? Well, we'll look at it. It. It's 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 not on a diet. It's just more compact. They basically took everything that's in this and improved it a little bit, but squeezed it into a much smaller package with the trade-offs that I talked about. They did go with a larger grip than they did have with the A7C originally, and the A7C2's grip feels much better in the hands. The A7 IV feels really nice in the hands as well, especially when you add the grips to both of them. They both feel very nice. If you're someone who has bigger hands and you want to have a beefier camera, the A7 IV is gonna be the one for you. If you're someone who just wants to take something smaller, maybe travel around, then the A7C2 might be the better option for you. Now, one of the most important things is talking about price. The A7 IV is $2,498, where the A7C2 is $2,198. That's like $298, $399, that's like $300 difference. It's crazy because I feel that you're getting better features or you actually are getting better features with the newer camera, but it's smaller and it doesn't have the two card slots, but it does have the AI processor for autofocus, whereas the a7 IV doesn't. I do suspect that in a matter of a year or so that the a7 IV will be replaced with an a7 V that will get basically the same features, maybe an updated sensor and processor, but at that point, that will be a better option. It's just interesting that this one is less expensive, but in my opinion, slightly better in certain situations. Now, if you're starting out as a photographer today and you wanna be a wedding photographer, you wanna shoot sports, this is a great, all around catch all type of camera. You can add a great amount of lenses to it. It may not be the fastest shooting camera in the world at maximum of 10 frames per second with mechanical and silent or mechanical and electronic. There are other options from other manufacturers that allow you to get more frames per second with the electronic shutter. But in this case, if you are looking to be in the Sony ecosystem, this is a very good starting point. Now, if you're someone who's traveling around, you, you are looking at maybe do I buy a Fuji X1 or a smaller Fuji to travel with because you like the size of it. I would say don't even look at the Fuji because this is an incredible option to take around with you around the world. It's gonna give you great results and just understand the trade-off is the basically the one card slot, not two. If you can get past that, then this is gonna be a fantastic camera for the same things that the a7 IV is gonna be a fantastic camera for. I'm gonna leave it there. What do you guys think? Which one of these cameras is the right one for you? Let me know down below. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.